Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another video lecture on JavaScript. I am Muhammad Iqbal Bak and let us start. Last time we covered the first data type in JavaScript that is strings. Now let us move ahead and try to understand another, another or other data types in JavaScript. So today first we will cover the number data type in JavaScript. So when we say number, numbers are important and are required to handle in every kind of application. But in JavaScript, number represents every kind of number that you want to handle inside the JavaScript. It represents integer numbers, floating point numbers, and even numbers in scientific notation. It also includes hexadecimal numbers, hexadecimal, octal, binary numbers. All kinds of data are handled with a single category when we call them number data type. So let us understand how to distinguish between different kinds of number data types and how to represent them so we will first start with integer numbers so integer numbers are the numbers that start from minus infinity to plus infinity without a fractional part that is without having a, a decimal followed by the fraction so integer numbers or we call them fixed point numbers are easy to represent for example if we want to represent positive integer numbers or negative integer numbers so we can make use of the var keyword followed by the name of the integer my first positive int equal to one two three four five Similarly, we can define my negative int equal to minus one to three four five. So it is easy since we are assigning a integer type literal to this variable. So it will hold uh, its data type as integer data type. And in JavaScript, we say that it is a numeric data type, number data type. So let us print it on the browser document.write my integer numbers are then the concatenation operator my positive integer plus a space then another number is my negative number. So let us now run this in the live server to see the output. So this is our output. My integer numbers are minus uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Similarly, we can present the floating point numbers. So floating point numbers are the numbers having a fractional part and we can cover both positive as well as negative floating point numbers so for example where my positive Load equal to one two three four five point one two three four five and where my negative load equal to one two three four five but preceded with a minus sign so we can accordingly print it so 
we will copy this first line remember one more shortcut for visual studio code that if you want to copy any line then you don't need to select the whole line and then press ctrl c instead you can put the cursor anywhere in the line and then press ctrl c it will copy the whole line and then we can paste it same is the procedure for if you want to cut some line so you will put the cursor anywhere in the line and press ctrl x it will cut whole line so my floating numbers are my positive float and my negative float so let us see the output oh, sorry i put, forget to put a break at the start of this line so that we will get this output on the next line so my floating point numbers are one to three four point point one this and negative one is one to three four point this so this is how to represent integers and floating point numbers inside the now important one important point one important point is here what is the storage occupied be by these integers or floating point numbers so in c or c plus plus we know that if we want to represent an integer it can occupy a 16 or 32 bit storage depending upon the architecture of the system and a float occupies a 32 bit storage and a uh, double which is double precision uh, floating point number that occupies 64 bit storage a character occupies one byte so similarly if we want to know what is the storage occupied by these numbers remember that in in javascript all numbers are represented in double precision floating point format so in javascript all numbers whether you are representing uh, an integer or a float or a scientific notation or an octal number or a hexadecimal number all numbers occupy similar space that is a double precision floating point format and we know that a double precision floating point number occupies 64 bits of storage as per ieee 754 format we know that in IEEE 754 format, we have two representations of floating point numbers. One is single precision that occupies 32 bit, and another is double precision that occupies 64 bit storage. So in JavaScript, all numbers are stored in IEEE 754 format, double precision floating point format, and they occupy 64 bits of storage. So now, move ahead now let us move to third type of numbers that is how to represent numbers in scientific notation so first what is the need of scientific notation the scientific notation is used to present numbers that are very large in a compact form for example if i am having this number this is one lakh so i can write it in a scientific notation as 10 mal 10 multiplied by base raised to power the power since after the 10 there are four zeros so i can write 10 raised to power 4. so this is called the scientific notation and it represents the numbers in a short form so here the while representing any number we have two parts one is called a mantissa that is the first part followed by an exponent in between there is the base 
that is 10 raised power 4 this is called a base and base is written in between so now if we have negative numbers minus 10,000 so if this is minus 1 lakh then we proceed the first values of the side similarly if you want to write fractional numbers for example i am having 0 0.002 i can write it in scientific notation as the number 2 multiplied by the base 10 and the number of places it is to the right of the fraction 1 2 3 4 it is four places to the right of the fraction so this power minus 4 why minus because it is to the right of the fraction so this is how to write fractional number similarly if i have a negative fractional number minus 0 0.0002 i can write it as minus 2 into 10 raised power minus 4 so in this way this formula becomes minus plus minus minus now i have plus minus exponent So this mantis I can be positive or negative. This exponent can, can be positive or negative. We can have it both. So in both the forms, we can write the huge numbers, large numbers in shorter forms. So this notation can be used in JavaScript. So for example, if I want to represent this first number in scientific notation, in Java, I can write it as where my scientific number one equal to so it is written as the mantissa part is 10 and the exponent part is 4 4 now how to write this base in javascript the default base is 10 and it is always represented by e is the notation on it so this is equivalent to 10 into 10 raised power 4, this one lakh number. So similarly, I can write this negative number. My scientific number 2, minus 10 into 10 raised power 4. And finally, I can write these five numbers 3 and 4 the first fraction number is 2 e raised power minus 4 and the second one is minus 2 e raised power minus 4 now let us print out these numbers using the document dot write and see the result my scientific numbers are first is so i need to select it if you want to copy only a portion of the line my scientific number first plus my scientific number two space plus my scientific number three plus space my scientific number four so let us see the output so this is the result my scientific numbers are 1 lakh, minus 1 lakh, 0 0.0002, minus 0 0.0002. So this is how we can make use of the scientific notation 
to write large numbers in shorter form. See, in place of this one lakh, if I am not writing it in scientific notation, then I have to write it as one zero 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 five zeros. So this is a large number. I can cut it short. Similarly, if you are having one million, you can write it as as ten e raised to power five or one billion. So you can write it as ten e raised to power uh, seven. So uh, and so on. So this was regarding the scientific notation. Now let us know how to write hexadecimal, octal, and binary numbers. So now let us know how to write these. These are written uh, similarly as the integers or floating point numbers are written but the only difference is that while assigning the literal part you precede these literals literals with some notations so what are the notations for hexadecimal you have to precede the literal with 0x for octal you have to precede the literal with 0o and for binary numbers you have to precede the literal with 0b so these are the prefixes that you have to attach with the literals literal is the value that are you that you are assigning to a variable so for example if i want to write a hexadecimal number where my x number equal to so i will precede it with 0x and then i will write the hexadecimal number 55 ff1b so this is a hexadecimal number Similarly, I can write my octal number is equal to, I have to precede it with 0 and then uh, O and then followed by the octal number 712. Since in octal we have numbers from 0 to 7. Where my binary number is equivalent to, so I can precede it with 0 then small b or capital B small b only because it is case sense to and then the number 10101 this is a binary number so let us now print out these numbers my numbers in different bases are First one is hexadecimal. So I will write my hex number. Second one is an octal, comma octal. So my octal number. And the third one is comma binary my binary number and rest we will delete up to the end we'll save it and let us see the result so here is the result my numbers in different bases are hexadecimal is 1048347 so this is the integer while processing or presenting these numbers these will be automatically converted to decimal format octal is 367 and binary number that i have represented 10101 that is 42 so this is how you can represent numbers in different bases let us move to another topic what if we have a number appended with some string so if we have a number appended with some string portion then how to extract this number part from it so for example if you are given a number 
one two three times something so this is a string so for example where string my string equal to one two three four times since this string is having an integer part followed by some text string so if we want to extract this number from this string then what is the procedure similarly if we are having some fractional part for example my number is my time equal to 0 0.13 seconds and you want to extract this integer or this floating point number from this number so what is the procedure so for that we have two functions two important functions one is parse int parse int and second is parse float in parse int the argument is the string that you want to convert into the integer floating part and in parse int we have a string followed by an optional argument radix the radix is the base of the number if it is in different base you can uh, also forward that so now let us see how to convert where my converted int equal to we can write it as parse int and then the string that we want for us and the, the string from which we want to extract this integer part so i will write my string so what this parsing will do it will extract the integer part as soon as it encounters the integer part it will start scanning it extracting it and as soon as this integer part finishes it will stop so it will extract that number and put it inside this number similarly where my converted float for the parse float my time so from this time it will extract the 0 0.13 and skip the scans and will automatically convert it into a floating number so let us try write these numbers document dot write the converted numbers are first is int int we have my converted converted int plus second one is float so we have my converted float let us proceed it with a break so as to print it on the next one let us see the result so control s so what is happening since it is not printing the result so this may be an error let us see what is the error we can check it out with the help of java developer chrome developer tools so let us press ctrl shift i to open the developer tools and here is the problem on cart reference float part float is not we have written it part float instead of parse float so now let us correct it it is part float we have to write parse float so let us again go to the browser and here is our convert numbers are int is one two three four five so this means it has extracted the one two three four five 
from the first string and float is 0 0.13 and it has kept the entire string part so these are the two important functions that you can use for int and for float these two functions come handy when you are receiving data from the users and you want to uh, then process it whether that is integer type data or since the result that comes from the browser in the uh, uh, that is received from the forms is in string format you first of all need to convert those numbers or those uh, strings into the respective integer or float type only then you can uh, process them one more thing uh, with regard to these numbers is sometimes while receiving information from the users through forms you want to check whether the number supplied by the user is really a number so how to check whether a number is a number or a not so for that we have a function called is nan so it is used to check whether a number is a number or not so is nan minute is not a number so if the argument the supplied argument is not a number it will be true and if it is a number then it is result will be false for example if i have a variable equal to 100 divided by what is it? so what do you think what will be the result stored inside this my false number it is having an integer part but as a denominator it is having a string so this certainly the result certainly is not a number so if you want to check that so we can write document dot write so we want to test whether my follows number is a number so we can use this function is then and in the argument we will write the number my follows number so if this my follows number is a number then it will type it will return yes if it is not a number then it will return false so let us see the result let us put a break at the start so whether my father's number is a number no it is not a number the result is true true means it is not a number so this means it is not a number is nine return is true means this is not a number similarly for example if i have a number my second f number number 2 equal to 100,000 divided by 1.45 now let us check whether this my false number is a number or not since again we are having the same situation the numerator is an integer part and the denominator is a string but remember while calculating integer expressions or floating expressions if we provide some number as a string it will be automatically converted to a number if it can be since this is a pure string and it cannot be converted to a number so it is not used while calculating this result but here in this case one two three four five is a number valid number though it is in a string format the automatic conversion will convert it into a number and then calculate the result so this time this should be a valid number so if we will write this line again so the result will be false is name is name my false number two is a number this time what should be the result of this is name is name means is not a number but this time this is a number so it will return false so we have whether my false number is a number false
So false means it is a number. So these were two important functions. These were two important functions to check whether a number is a number or a not. Next topic is how to declare numbers as objects. Till now we have been declaring numbers as literals while providing the literal part. And now how to declare them as an object. Same as we declared the strings with the help of a string object where name of the string equal to new uh, string. So here we have an object number that we can use to declare numbers. For example, why my object number equal to new number. And here we can provide any valid number. One, two, three, four, five. So this will declare this number same as we use it to declare it with the help of literals where we use it to provide the value of the number here we are providing it as an argument to this uh, class number and it returns a new object of this type so this object number will be a number as we used to declare previously but there are some properties associated with this number object for example max value we can see the maximum value of a number we can see the minimum value of a number and similarly the maximum safe value integer value and the minimum safe integer value so let us type some of them Right. The maximum value of a number is number dot max value. Let's see, here are some properties number dot max value. We choose the maximum value for that number maximum safe value as an integer minimum value and minimum safe value as an integer so let us see maximum value copy this line a few more times the maximum safe integer value of a number is maximum safe integer value minimum value of a number is number dot mean value and the minimum safe integer value of a number is number dot mean safe value now let us see the result first of all put some break before these numbers let us learn another shortcut of this visual studio code since we want to print this break before each of these lines we want to print it four times so normally we will type it four times so there is a procedure a shortcut in visual studio code that is called multiple cursors where we can write a single line at multiple places so let us see how so we want to write it at these four places start the cursor at the first place and then hold down the alt key and then press the place where you want to write it again this is the second cursor and then the third cursor keep holding the alt key and then the fourth now start typing break and it will 
type the break at all the four places again click on any place and it will come out of this multi-cursor mode so this is another shortcut of this visual studio code so keep remember it it helps us at a number of places so let us save the result and see the result in the browser so maximum value of a number is 1.7 erase power 308 maximum safe value this is the maximum safe value of an integer and if a number goes beyond that range it will be converted to an infinity minimum safe value is this and minimum safe integer value is this now what happens if the maximum value of any number is 1.7 into e raised power 308 let us declare a variable with this range one point seven power three hundred eight instead of three hundred eight I would write three hundred nine and I want to print the result of this document dot write my now and proceed it with a break so this is beyond the range of this number value data type so the maximum range is 308 and i have written 309 so now what do we think what will happen what will be this what will be stored inside this minor let us check out infinity so this means if a number goes out of range it is automatically converted into a into an infinity so you can check there is a function to check whether a number is finite or not so we can use this function is finite so if the number is finite it is a real integer or a real number then it would return to otherwise false so let us write document dot write first put a break is my num finite let us check out is finite and will provide my num so since this time this number is not a finite number it will return false so is my num finite no false because it is an infinite number why is it infinite because we have initialized it with uh, with a number that is out of the range of a maximum uh, range that can be holded inside a double floating point number so this was another important function remember that it comes handy when you want to check whether a number is finite or not so this was all about numbers in javascript now let us quickly cover the third primitive data type that is boolean so boolean is used to handle the data that can be either true or false so we can define variables that can hold the results as true or false and these are used while evaluating the boolean expressions or conditional statements and so let us see how to declare a boolean variable there are two ways to declare a variable boolean variable one is through a literal another through an object so declaring it declaring a boolean variable with literal so where my bool equal to true or where my bool equal to false a boolean can hold only two results true or false or any expression that evaluates to true or false for example i can write 5 less than 10 so since this expression 5 is less than 10 it is true it would uh, give the result as true and if i write 5 greater than 10 
it will return the result as follows. So any expression that evaluates to true or false can be initialized to a Boolean variable. No other value can be given to it. Or if we provide some strings, those strings will be evaluated to whether true or false that we can check whether they are true or false and depending upon their values they will be assigned to the result for example if i assign the value zero to this bool value and since zero in boolean is considered as false so the value of this boolean will be false similarly if i write one or any number greater than one that will evaluate to a true value and similarly if i assign an empty string to it an empty string evaluates to false so the value of this my bool will be false since an empty string evaluates to a false value Similarly, a num null value evaluates to false if I assign null to this bool. Null is a special kind of primitive value that means no value uh, that represents when there is absence of the information, no value. So for that, we can use null. If I assign null to this bool, it is it will be evaluated as false. So now let us print the result of this document or write the uh, break my now remember one more shortcut if you want to use if i want to duplicate this line in visual studio code you can press and hold shift and alt and then press the down arrow It'll, it will duplicate it on the downside and if you will uh, press the up arrow it will duplicate it on the upper side so this is another shortcut keep remembering these shortcuts they come handy while uh, using this Visual Studio Code or uh, using uh, any kind of programming in Visual Studio Code. So now I can write the value of my bool2 is my bool2. Let us see the result in the browser. The value of my bool is true and the value of my bool2 is false. Now let us assign some expression to bool1. 5 is less than 10 and 5 is greater than 10. Since 5 is less than 10, it will return true and my bool will be true. And 5 is greater than 10 is false. The second will be have false value. Here is the result. Similarly, if I assign an empty string to the first variable and zero to the second variable or a null to the second variable both of the variables will be having false value sorry i have to quote it in it is not working not null is assigning it into a null we can use null with boolean variables that are declared with the help of objects so let us assign it some other value a string so now this will be converted to a string let us assign it for example one two one but we cannot use this these numbers while declaring variables with the help of literals for that we need to declare the variables with the help of boolean object let us see that function declaring a boolean variable with a boolean object 
so for that we can declare my new bool equal to new boolean here we can assign different kinds of values to check whether they are evaluated to a true or false value for example i can provide a null value similarly let us duplicate it a number of times i can assign an empty string similarly i can assign a number i can assign zero i can assign some string so now we can check whether these values are evaluated to a true or false value of the boolean so let us print it in the help of document or write the value of my new who is this is one two three four and five plus here we want to type the number my new bool let us duplicate this line five times we want to change this into one two three four five so we can type we can hold down the alt and click on all these numbers and write since we don't need to here so we have to write it two three four five six there are only five we can cut this line three four five so let us see the result of this but since we want to put a break at the beginning of each line so we will use the multiple cell functionality by pressing the alt and clicking on the places where we want to write the same line break so here the result the value of my bool is true false this is the first one let us see what we have assigned my bool with a null empty string Here we have provided one. Here we have provided zero. And finally, here we have provided a dummy string. So here null is evaluated to false, empty is evaluated to false, one is evaluated to true, zero is already false, and a dummy string is evaluated to true. If we have a dummy string, an empty string is evaluated to false and a string having more than one character is evaluated to true. So this was regarding booleans. So how to use these boolean variables in different conditional statements that we will be covering later on in this lecture series. So these were the different kind of data types that we can use inside this JavaScript. These were the primitive data types. So in the next lecture, we will be covering another, uh, other kinds of data types that are non-primitive. So keep watching this channel for more updates and more videos. Thanks.